Before we dive in, I just want to also share a heartfelt thank you to so many of you who've already pre-ordered your copy of Worthy already. And you know, I want you to know that for Worthy, um, just like for my first book, Believe It, I'm donating 100% of my author proceeds, 100% of the proceeds from the book are being donated uh, to Feeding America and to causes that support building self-worth in girls and women. So the book not only impacts you directly, uh, but it also has a ripple effect on the impact of the lives of so many more. So super honored and just grateful. The incredible Robin Roberts recently read an early copy of Worthy and here's what she says about it. Empowering, life-changing, absolutely phenomenal. Worthy will not only help you emotionally, physically, and spiritually, but will also give you the tools to realize you are worthy of all three. Whew, Robin, <laughs> when she texts, I just literally was bawling when she texted me that. Um, I wanna share a big thank you to the incredible Ellen DeGeneres, uh, who read a sneak peek copy of Worthy. Here's what she says a masterpiece on building self-confidence, self-worth, and self-love. This book gives you the tools to trust yourself, love yourself, and heal your life. I couldn't put it down. I'm trying to imagine Ellen not being able to put it down. I freaked out. Okay, she said, I couldn't put it down. It's an absolute must read for you and everyone in your life who needs to know their worth. Thank you so much, Ellen. And you know, building self-worth is so important because here's what I know to be true. And this is a quote straight from the book, Worthy. In life, you don't soar to the level of your hopes and dreams. You stay stuck at the level of your self-worth. You don't rise to what you believe is possible. You fall to what you believe you're worthy of. When I got this lesson in my life, whoo, after sabotaging a whole lot of stuff in my life, after getting some things I wanted, but then not understanding why I didn't feel fulfilled, or after getting some things and then literally losing them, it, this lesson has changed my entire life. I'm excited to share this sneak peek, advanced chapter read of my book Worthy with you, and also dive into some incredibly powerful tools on how to build true, unshakable self-worth together. I wrote Worthy for every person who has ever doubted you're enough, for every person who's ever doubted your worthiness, and for every person who is sick and tired of what self-doubt has already cost you in your life. And I wrote Worthy after a series of powerful moments led me to consider what does self-doubt already cost me in my life, and the answer was way too much. And if this is you too, I wrote this book with the intention of helping you feel less alone and more enough and to share powerful tools that you can apply to your life right now to build true self-worth. So here's the thing is I used to think I was all alone in these struggles, right? I don't know if you have them too and you feel like you're alone in them, but with deep self-doubt, like I felt alone in that and I used to try to hide it. And you know, once I became uh, so much more aware and then I became obsessed with studying self-worth and tools to build it, I learned that I am far from alone. You are too if you feel it. If you struggle with self-doubt, we are far from alone. Studies show more than 80% of women feel like they are not enough. First of all, that is why I'm donating 100% of my author proceeds of Worthy, that in big part go to programs that help build self-worth in girls and women, but it truly is the intention behind this book because here's the thing, self-worth is the one thing that changes everything in all areas of your life. And what's beautiful and powerful is it is never too late to build it. I don't know who needs to hear this today. One of my um, amazing friends, Mally Roncal, always says, you are not too old, you're not too young, it's not too late, your best days are ahead. I love that quote from her. And here's the thing, it's never too late to unlearn the lies that lead to self-doubt and embrace the truths that wake up worthiness. So I wrote this book for you if you have some self-doubt to destroy and a destiny to fulfill. And I am so excited and I just, you know, I'd love to start by sharing 
some of the most powerful tools on building self-worth and sharing sort of the high level overview and the table of contents for Worthy and just sort of share with you a couple lines and in some cases some deep tools um, on the key takeaways so that you know what you're in store with this book. Here's the thing, um, with Worthy, the table of contents, I'm gonna take you through it because I want you to really get it, take it in what we're expecting in this book. So part one of Worthy is called Seeing. This is all about self-confidence, self-worth, and self-revelations. So chapter one is called The One Thing That Transforms Everything. This is a chapter that lays out the foundation of self-worth and how building it truly impacts all areas of your life. And here's the thing, y'all. Okay, I gotta go deep for a minute before I continue. Self-confidence is very different than self-worth. Okay, I wanna pause for a minute and I wanna go deep here uh, on this because really this is the first tool that was one of the biggest breakthroughs in my life and it really comes down to the importance of understanding the difference between self-confidence and self-worth and how they both play out in your life right now. Okay, this one's big. See, both are so important but they both are very different and I've gotten so many questions from you on social media and even live questions tonight in the comments uh, about this. So I wanna go deeper for a minute. See, self-confidence, okay? Self-confidence is how you assess yourself based on your skills, your attributes, how you stack up compared to others, your willingness to try. If you keep the promises you make to yourself, self-confidence, even though it's internal, it can fluctuate by the second based on how things are going all around you, right? If you're winning or you're losing, um, if you're hitting your fitness goals, how much of the world's definition of success you have. And here's the thing, y'all, almost every advertisement our entire lives tells us, if, and, and, and well-intentioned family and friends, tells us that if we could just get the things that make us more confident, the money, that job title, the white picket fence, the, the perfect looking family, right? All the things people ask you when they see you, how's your job going? What about your family? Are you in a relationship, right? We're told if we get those things, then we'll be happy, then we'll be fulfilled. But let me ask you a question. Have you ever finally gotten that thing? Like you got it, like you worked so hard to get it. And then you arrive there and you realize Maybe it's after a year or a month or a week or a few hours, you realize you're still not fully happy and it still feels like something's missing. So then what do we do in that case? We work harder and harder and harder and accomplish more and more and more. We think I just gotta achieve more. I've just gotta get that next level. Then we arrive and all y'all achievers out there, you'll know what I'm talking about, we arrive and what happens? We still feel like something's missing. Here's why. It's because all of these things that we're so often striving so hard to get, they build self-confidence, which is so important to build. But none of them actually build self-worth. Self-worth is the deep internal knowing that you are innately worthy of love and belonging exactly as you are right now, in this very moment. Not as you achieve, not dependent on anything happening around you or not happening around you or anything in the past that went well or didn't go well, but you are worthy exactly as your creator made you. And so many women, whether you're high achievers or, or, or perfectionists or people pleasers and you know, really people everywhere, spend their whole lives striving and sacrificing for the things like hitting that fitness goal or getting that job title or the marriage and the kids and the dream house. And then they think, we're, all of us do. I, you guys, decades in my life I did. I thought I needed to achieve to be happy. But then we achieve and we arrive going, why aren't we fulfilled? Because while we're building great self-confidence along the way, which again, is so, it's such an important component of life, but we don't realize that those things 
don't actually build self-worth and we haven't learned how to build strong self-worth along the way. So both self-confidence and self-worth are such important skills to build in life, but they're both very different. Self-worth is your foundation. That is your foundation. Self-confidence is the house you build on top of it. But your house will only ever be as secure and as fulfilled as the foundation it is built upon. Understanding the difference between self-confidence and self-worth will change every aspect of your life and learning how to build true self-worth allows you to feel fulfillment while you're achieving all the things that can only build self-confidence. This is a huge revelation, y'all, because for those of you that feel like something's missing in your life and you don't know why and you're doing all the right things, right? And then people often, I'm gonna get way off on a tangent, let me not do this, but people often will end, quit a job because they think, oh, that's why I'm not fulfilled. Or they'll end a marriage or end a relationship or whatever it is because they think that's why I'm not fulfilled. Something's missing in my life. And so many of the times it's because they're doing all the things that build confidence and they think that they should feel like nothing's missing, but when they do not have underlying self-worth, you can never feel true fulfillment. So here's the deal, y'all. I'm not gonna go off because we'll be on here for 10 hours of a worthy watch party, but separate <laughs> of your victories and achievements or past mistakes and failures, you are fully worthy. Like true self-worth is knowing you are fully innately worthy right now, in this very moment, exactly as you are. Whew, that is chapter one, by the way. So let me go through some of these a little faster, but y'all, we didn't come here to play. Like, your time is precious, and I just, decades of my life, I couldn't understand why it felt like something's missing, you know, or why I sabotaged opportunities, etc. This has been the one thing that's changed everything in my life. So I'm just honored to share it with you. Okay, chapter two is called, Change Your Relationship with Rejection, Change Your Entire Life. If you feel stuck in life, or if you've had you know, the fear of rejection or failure, or if you've ever felt like you are a failure, and I only say that because so many of you guys write in and say that to me that you feel that way, this chapter, is gonna be life-changing for you. Chapter two called, Change Your Relationship with Rejection, Change Your Life. Chapter three, chapter three is called, You're Not Crazy, You're Just First. You're not crazy, you're just first. If you have ever felt like you're different or like who you are isn't enough or like you don't belong, this chapter reframes that and will set you free. I am going to come back in a minute actually um, because I really want to share a powerful lesson and a tool with you in words that I hope speak to your soul that you can apply to your life right now. Chapter four, you have greatness inside of you. This is all about how your past doesn't determine your future. It's all about how your past mistakes or past pain or past regrets, past failures, doesn't determine your worthiness and how where you come from doesn't have to determine where you're going. Okay, if you're someone who feels like you've made too many mistakes, been too hurt, or maybe you feel like you've hurt others too many times, or Maybe you feel like you're somehow damaged or broken or have been carrying around shame. I share some of the things in my past for the first time ever in this chapter. And I share things that most of my family doesn't know, that many who read it might shame me for. But I'm sharing them because this book isn't about me, right? This book is about the one person reading it, maybe that is you, who needs to know that you are not alone, right? That, that your past, as my dear friend Ed Milet says, your past does not disqualify you from your dreams. And this chapter, I almost deleted a few times because I know how shocking it's gonna be to a lot of people. Um, 
in my family. But here's the thing, y'all. The story the press loves to share about me looks like, you know, the highlight reel, right? It looks like the highlight reel. And Denny's Waitress builds billion dollar company and like that's all true. Um, but this isn't a book about my story. This is a book about your story, right? When I wrote Believe It, it was my journey of learning to believe in myself up until that point. Worthy is the playbook on how you can believe in you. And I just knew I cannot allow this chapter to be deleted because I know, I know what I know what I know what I know. And it is for the one person, and maybe it's you, who feels like what you've done in the past and the shame you've been carrying around for it has caused you to have deep self-worth issues where you identify as someone who's broken or shameful or made too many stakes, mistakes and all that, and that you're sort of putting up this barrier of belief of how, you know, we, we open tonight talking about how in life you don't rise to what you believe is possible, you fall to what you believe you're worthy of. This chapter is about reframing and shifting what you know, I'm not even gonna say what you believe, what you know you're worthy of, regardless of past mistakes or anything that's happened in the past. All right, then we go in to part two of Worthy. Part two is called Unlearning. Part two is called Unlearning. And unlearning, this is all about uh, the lies that lead to self-doubt and then the truths that wake up worthiness. This is a whole section about the lies, y'all. How many, uh, share with me in the comments <laughs> and wherever you're posting from, if you have believed some of the lies that cause self-doubt. Who in this room has believed some of the lies? <laughs> me. <laughs> too, too long, we have believed the lies for too long that lead to self-doubt and it's so important to embrace the truths and learn the truths that wake up worthiness. So, uh, section two, unlearning. Unlearning the lies that lead to self-doubt, waking up the truths, uh, waking up uh, uh, the truths that wake up worthiness. Okay, so chapter five, here's what it's called, y'all. You ready? Don't wait on your weight. Don't wait on your weight. The lie, my weight impacts my worth. Let me just be really clear, okay? This chapter has nothing to do with weight. It's not about what your weight is whatsoever, whatever it might be. This chapter is about waiting on your weight to live your life. I have missed out on so many moments in my life because I let my weight determine my worth. I've skipped parties and events. I've missed out on dates. Some were hot. I've missed out on coffees, on wearing a swimsuit and splashing in the sun. And what's wild is when you look at research, studies show 89% of girls and women will opt out of meaningful interactions when they don't like how they look. Y'all, the time for change has come. Don't wait on your weight, to live your best life, to launch the business, to write the book, to, to speak on stage, to tell the person you wanna be more than friends. And don't wait on your weight to know that you are worthy. All right, that's chapter five. That is chapter five. Chapter six, the lie. I should only be seen when I'm happy. I should only be seen when I'm happy. So many of us put pressure on ourselves to show up with a giant smile and a shirt that says good vibes only, but then we hide how we're really feeling and we think that we're unworthy of sharing our true feelings with others. Every time that we do this, we are telling ourselves we're unworthy of being who we truly are. So this is a chapter about unlearn, I heard a lot of mmm in the room. <laughs> like, mm. uh, this is a chapter about unlearning that lie and embracing the power of true, authentic connection. All right, chapter seven, the lie, I don't deserve better. If you've ever stayed in an unhealthy relationship or a friendship with a friend that doesn't truly value you like you deserve or like you value them, or you keep not setting that boundary with that family member, or maybe you've let people mistreat you because you fear being alone, this is a chapter about 
overcoming the lie that you don't deserve better. Chapter eight. So the lie, I don't have anything special to offer. If you have ever dealt with imposter syndrome or like your ideas and gifts and talents have already been done better by other people, you're gonna love chapter eight. Chapter nine is all about the lie that I need to please them to love me. If you are a people pleaser, this chapter is for you. It's all about how people pleasing impacts your self-worth Right? So when you believe the lie that you need to please others in order to be loved, you're gonna love this chapter because uh, it teaches you how to unlearn that lie. And so often when we're people pleasing for others, we're betraying ourselves. So this is a really powerful one. Chapter 10, okay. The lie, if I stand out, I'll get kicked out. You ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like if I stand out, I'll be kicked out? And when at our core, we all crave love and belonging, this could be a real fear and a real lie that we believe. So if you're somebody who dims your light, this chapter is for you. Chapter 11, chapter 11, the lie, I'm an imposter and not enough on my own. If you feel like you need someone else to rescue you or complete you, whether it's a romantic partner or even a mentor, this is a chapter that dives deep into the lie that you are not whole on your own and as you are. Okay, chapter 12, the lie. If I'm me, I won't be loved. Mm. This chapter dives into the power of embracing and loving who you authentically are and how, here's the thing y'all, okay, take note of this, okay? You can only ever achieve the depth of love and intimacy with others as the depth of love you have for yourself. So many of us are like, what's missing in my friendships? They don't feel fulfilling. Or what's missing in, with my partnership? And yes, of course, we all have lots of other issues. Well, I'll speak for myself. We, a lot of us have lots of other issues. But this is so big, y'all, because so many people go their entire lives and never realize this, that the depth of love and connection you can have with another person can only ever be as deep as the depth of love and connection you have with yourself. And that's what this chapter is all about. Chapter 13. Chapter 13, the lie, labels are permanent. If you have let something uh, that someone else said about you stick like a label. And maybe it's something that you believed about yourself. You could do it on your own too. We all give ourselves labels that somehow become this like heavy label, right? Maybe it's a label that says hurtful words like failure or unattractive or unqualified or uncool or, 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 or bad mom right? And you've been carrying around that label like a lead weight, thinking it's permanent. Maybe you're carrying around a lot of, I carried around a lot of labels most of my life that weighed me down, right? This chapter is going to be so transformative and impactful for you because labels are not permanent. They've all got this light, removable adhesive, just like post-it note, post notes do, right? And, and when you remove these labels, when you unlearn the lie of these labels and you replace them and you learn how to un, undo them, rip them off, right? It can literally transform your self-worth. It's a tool that's been life-changing for me, and I'm so excited to... Uh, to go through this with you and experience this journey with you. So, okay, part three, part three of Worthy, transforming. Part three of Worthy is transforming. This is all about the journey of you, about building unshakable self-worth and unconditional self-love. And just think about that for a moment, unconditional self-love. Y'all, almost all of us love ourselves conditionally. If I do this right, then I'll love myself. If I achieve this much, then I'll, all the things. We say we love unconditionally other people, but do we actually love ourselves unconditionally? For most of us, the answer is no. This is about unconditional self-love. It's transformative. So chapter 14, 
Self-worth is the multiplier. Okay, just gonna give you a little warning. We didn't come here to waste some time. Worthy is not here to play small. In chapter 14, self-worth is the multiplier, okay? It's packed with tactical tools. There's equations and charts. I don't want you to freak out, but there are some. <laughs> but I promise you, I promise you, like even if you're not a math person, even if you're not an equation and chart person, like I didn't build this uh, or write this book, you know, to, 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 to play small. Like I, this is my life's greatest work. It's been the most impactful thing in my entire life. And so I'm giving you everything I got, including some equations and charts, because this, char this chapter is all about cracking the code of fulfillment in your life. Okay, chapter 15. Do you see you? Let me ask you this question. When is the last time you truly saw yourself and truly connected with yourself? Your depth of connection with others, right? We shared a little bit earlier. It can only ever be as deep as your depth of connection with yourself. This chapter is about the science and the art of how to do that. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a thing. <laughs> okay, chapter 16. Know your why, then fly, girl, fly. This chapter is about the power of identifying your why for your worthiness journey and why it matters so much. Chapter 17 is circle or cage. It is called circle or cage. And here's the thing, I want you to think about your family and your friends and your life right now, okay? Your close family, this is gonna be a real personal question, but let's go there. Your close family and your close friends in your life right now, do they feel like a circle or do they feel more like a cage? This chapter is deep and it's powerful and we're gonna go into building a strong inner circle and, and, and a strong outer circle how to do that, and then what to do if you know someone in your life who doesn't deserve to be an either, um, but how to navigate that, right? If it's a friend or family member who you love, you love them, you're not gonna like peace out or anything like that, you love them, but you can feel more like you're in a cage than in a circle when you're around them, right? So this is gonna dive deep into circles and cages and how to build your inner circle, your outer circle, how to handle it when someone shouldn't be an either, but you still wanna love them. Uh, and here's the thing, your circle might be two people. It might be you know, five people. Just make sure they're the right people. And this chapter is about how to do that. Chapter 18, overexposed, underdeveloped overexposed and underdeveloped. This is a chapter about the real raw candid truth about how to not just gain, but also su sustain uh, uh, all of the successes in your life, in all aspects of your life, and also how to not only gain, but sustain strong self-worth. Okay, chapter 19, transformations. If you're in a season of transition in your life right now, or maybe you're about to embark on one, whether it's a, a, a transition uh, of a new chapter, or maybe a dream in your career, um, maybe it's in a, you're in a transition of wanting to attract and build uh, friendships or relationships in your life, um, or maybe it's just an evolution of who you are, uh, chapter 19 on transformations is going to fill your soul. Okay, the final part of the book. So excited, y'all. The final part of the book is called Knowing. Knowing. You are worthy. It's in you. It is you. Chapter 20 is called Your Ticket to the Moon. This is all about how to build your intuition and build the habit of taking that next right step in life, even if you don't have all the answers, even if you don't feel ready, even if things aren't perfect. This is about getting unstuck, building intuition, and, and taking action in your life. Chapter 21, who are you really doubting? That's the name of the chapter. Who are you really doubting? And this is a chapter all about how your faith, no matter what you believe in, how your faith can impact your worthiness and how if you believe what you say you believe, 
It can act as one of the most powerful tools in building self-worth. Okay, chapter 22 is called Solos. Chapter 22 is called Solos. And in this chapter, it opens with the quote, there are no mistakes in dance class, only solos. So often in life, we're trying to stay in line to like, you know, make sure that we're doing the right move and do it all perfectly. And we think a misstep is, is bad or wrong. But there are no mistakes in dance class. And there are no mistakes in life, only solos. Solos are where ideas are birthed. Solos is where your authenticity shines. Solos taste like truth and they feel like freedom. It's in the solos that your true beauty shines. And even if you feel like you've made, you know, so many mistakes or you've had so many setbacks or you're going on a different path in life than you had planned or than others expected of you, there are no mistakes in dance class, only solos. You're not a bad dancer. When it comes to life, that's actually impossible. Maybe you're just born to do solos. So excited for to share this chapter with you. Okay. Last chapter, chapter 23, called You Are Worthy, Your Victory Lap Starts Now. Every chapter before this one builds and stacks up intentionally on top of each other, all leading one after another in the entire journey through the book uh, to chapter 23. Uh, and it's just so fully intentional. So I'm not gonna give it away. It is so, so, so important. Uh, that all the bricks are laid in the foundation before you get there and all the chapters leading up to it. But what I will say is I cannot wait to share chapter 23 with you uh, called You Are Worthy, Your Victory Lap Starts Now. Okay, I wanna dive deep into one tool you can apply to your life right now because I promised you uh, that I'm gonna share a bit more about chapter three called You're Not Crazy, You're Just First. I wanna dive deep in this because specifically I wanna share some words that just might be for you in your very moment in life. Words that you can apply to your life right now as you're on your journey to becoming the person you're born to be. And I get so many questions about this concept um, on social media from you. You're asking me to explain um, what do I mean by this concept that you're not crazy, you're just first. Are y'all ready? I know this is for someone and I feel it in my entire being. So let me just start by saying, if you are wondering if you are first, you are. See, when you are one of the brave ones willing to show up and live your life authentically as who you are, you're first. There's only one of you that's ever been created. There's no one else in existence quite like you. No one else quite like you. No one else with your fingerprints or with the iris of your eyes. No one else with your tongue print. Yep, we all have unique tongue prints, every single one of us. And when you live as who you were authentically created to be, not as your representative that you show up as to make everyone else happy, not as you know your job title, not as who others expect or hope you to be, but as who you authentically are created to be, you are first. You are the only one that is you. And when you are first, not everyone is gonna get it but it's the only way to live the highest, truest path to your calling. Living as the authentic you can be scary, but here's the deal, y'all. What I know for sure in leadership, in business, in relationships, and in fulfillment in life, that while authenticity alone doesn't automatically guarantee success, inauthenticity guarantees failure. Right? So I'm gonna dive into this because you can apply it to your life right now. We got some exciting giveaways coming up in a few minutes, a bunch more giveaways, which I am, I love a good giveaway. Uh, but this one is really powerful and I know it's gonna hit home for so many of you because here's the thing, authenticity can be scary because when you're living authentically, you are first, the first to see the world the way you do, the first to have the ideas that you have, the first to experience emotions and art and beauty and vision the way that you do. And not everyone else is gonna get it because your creator made your unique set of talents and gifts and thoughts and ideas only inside of you. And see, 
for me, most of my life, I would, you know, I remember growing up and then even later in my teens and 20s, even in my 30s, I would share some of my big, bold, God-sized dreams with people around me and they would call me words like crazy. They'd say, you're the crazy one. You're, you're crazy for those ideas. They call me crazy or odd or different. And sometimes I would feel like I didn't fit in. And sometimes I get pretty sad about it. And when we feel like we are odd or different or don't belong, it can be sad. And one day I realized this in this aha light bulb moment, like a powerful burst. I'm not crazy. I'm just first. Those words helped me build a company that did things totally different in the beauty industry. And, and, and these words helped me keep believing in the power of my unique ideas, even when industry experts told me that they would never work. And in fact, it was by believing, I'm not crazy, I'm just first, it helped me get past feelings of not being like everyone else in the beauty industry. And I was able to turn, you know, overcoming those feelings of not being like everyone else into building one of the largest companies in that industry because I wasn't like everyone else, right? And, and what I want you to know is that the thing right now, the thing you might be thinking is most wrong with you is so often the thing that's most right with you. So maybe you'll know in your soul that this exactly is for you today, but if you feel like you have big ideas on your heart or that people around you might love you but just don't quite get you, it's only because God made just one of you and I need you to hear these words right now. You're not crazy, you're just first. And while in Worthy there's 23 chapters of you know, tactical tools that build self-worth, I wanna share one excerpt. This is an excerpt, not the whole thing, from a poem in the book. The book uh, is, is so powerful, but I just, I felt in my soul that I have to share this with you tonight. Um, and these words are written from my soul to yours. The poem is called, You're Not Crazy, You're Just First. Who do you think you are, they say. Things like that aren't for people like us. Why are you going around changing, planning to leave us in the dust? Are you forgetting where you come from? Is it not good enough anymore? And just like that, the temptation to play life small feels more comfortable than before. They call you odd, strange, different for having dreams bigger than they can see because those dreams weren't given to them. They see them through fear and anxiety. And even well-intentioned people who love you to the bone can see you pursuing your dreams as a reflection of them not fulfilling their own. If people like people who are like them, hiding who you are can feel like home. But a calling unexpressed inside you leaves you feeling anguished and alone, even inside of your own home. They call you words like crazy and say, we stick together for better or for worse, but what your soul knows is you're not crazy, you're just first. The first to launch the business, to dust your dreams off of the shelf, the first to believe you're worthy of betting on yourself, the first to beat addiction, to live life sober and awake, the first to break that generational cycle that you know you're born to break, the first to start healing, the first to forgive so you'll be free, the first to love others for who they are, not for who you wish they'd be, the first to be a visionary, to dream up the screenplay that you'll write. The first to recognize your gifts and stop hiding in plain sight. The first boss in your company to say, I deal with self-doubt too. The first mom to say, no, I'm not okay. And I don't know what to do. The first in generations to love your body and celebrate it joyfully to prove it, to know that it's a miracle in motion and what a gift it is to move it. The first to risk rejection, to speak your truth with vigor, knowing that the opposition might be big, but your creator is bigger. The first to cheer yourself on and truly believe it, not just fake it, knowing that most people won't cheer you on until after you make it. The first to stand up for the outcast and say, stop teasing, I just won't. You might be tempted to underestimate me, but let me save you some time. Don't. 
The first to say, yeah, you hurt me, but I'm not rejected, see? God just hid my value from you because you're not assigned to my destiny. The first to believe in your dreams, even, even when others might not get you, then one day love them anyways when they're bragging to people how they met you. See, when we fear we're not enough and fear even more we won't be loved, it is so tempting to shrink in size and trade in our purpose for their hugs. But when you're feeling like you don't fit in or that you never quite belong, your uniqueness is your superpower, your truth is never wrong. And when they criticize to hold you back because your dreams aren't what they're used to and they're afraid that you'll outgrow them, leave them behind or that they'll lose you, Stop asking for their advice if they've never been there themselves. Because when you people please for others, you end up betraying yourself. So when doubt tempts you to dim your light, always remember this verse. Your soul knows you are made for more with so much purpose it could burst. You're born with greatness inside of you and whether it's a blessing or a curse, the world won't be better until your greatness is dispersed. See, there's only one of you in the entire universe, and your knowing knows you're not crazy, you're just first. So that is an excerpt from the You're Not Crazy, You're Just First poem. The whole poem is in the book, and I just wanna pause. Um, I just want to pause and take a minute to say thank you so much for ordering your copy of Worthy for yourself or for someone you care about. And one super important thing to share is I'm donating 100% of my author proceeds from Worthy to Feeding America and to causes that support building self-worth in girls and women. So the book not only impacts you directly, but it has a ripple effect on the impact of the lives of so many more. And I'm so excited to to share that if you order Worthy today, you know, from wherever you buy books, then you go to worthybook.com, you're going to get some incredible bonuses, Um, incredible bonuses as just a thank you for ordering. And amongst all the great bonuses you're going to get, I'm so excited about this, a 95-page Worthy workbook. 95 page worthy workbook is a digital action plan that helps you implement the tools from your from the book into your real life and normally you know a workbook like workbooks like this are typically sold separately right you buy them you buy the book you're going to get the 95 page workbook as a special thank you gift um, so for ordering so uh, you can go on worthybook.com to to grab uh, all your bonuses and you know what's so exciting also is maybe you've already ordered the book for yourself but you know someone else who could benefit from you know, building true self-worth, well, their name's probably popping in your head right now, and when you gift them a copy, um, they're gonna get all the amazing bonuses as well. So you could buy an extra copy for them or for the people you care about, and wherever books are sold, then you can actually submit your friends or loved ones info at worthybook.com, and um, you know, just to be sure, of course, send them a note, let them know you did it. Um, and I just wanna say thank you so much for helping me, not leaving me alone in this mission and helping me spread the word about Worthy and just help every one of us together build unshakable self-worth. We're all on this journey. We are all on this journey of building self-worth together and I'm just, I'm honored to be on it with you and um, I just wanna thank you. I'm so, so, so grateful for all of your help in this movement and to truly leave no girl, no woman, no person left behind and just believing then knowing. That's the key thing, knowing. They are worthy. The incredible Ed Milet recently read an early copy, my sweet dear friend um, of Worthy. Here's what he says about it. Groundbreaking. I've never been so moved by a book. The lessons and strategies in Worthy will change your life. Your heart will be healed, your soul stirred, and you'll never be the same again. Thank you so much, Ed. Whew. Dr. Nicole LaPera, you probably know her as holistic psychologist. The amazing Dr. Nicole LaPera um, got an advanced, very recently copy of the manuscript, a sneak peek, and here is what she said after reading it. Raw, vulnerable, and incredibly inspiring gift. Where these a masterclass on letting go of doubt, building the life you dream of, and stepping into your destiny. Jamie is a living example of power within, and this book will inspire you to tap into your own inherent worthiness. 
Nicole, thank you so, so, so much. Building self-worth is so important, y'all, because here's what I know to be true, and this is a direct quote straight from Worthy, the book, is that the moment you learn to trust yourself and believe you are worthy is the moment your entire life, the past and future generations of your family, and our entire world changes for the better. Anyone who pre-orders the book and then you go to worthybook.com to get your bonuses, one of them is that you get an invite. It's free. <laughs> invite to the VIP launch team. Uh, and what's so cool about that is even though the book comes out in February when you join the VIP launch team now, right, we're going to start doing lots of self-training, uh, lots of live trainings on self-worth together. Uh, so we're going to start those a few months before the book comes out. So you're going to enter the new year feeling worthy. 2024 is going to be the year of feeling worthy. Um, you're also going to get all the other bonuses. You're going to get a copy of Worthy, a digital copy in advance uh, before anyone else sees it. So that's also what you get as part of the VIP launch team. Of course, you're going to get the 95-page action plan that we just announced tonight. This is a brand new pre-order bonus. By the way, a lot of you ask, why should I pre-order? It doesn't come out for a while. So whether it's me or someone else, let's just take any other author you know in your life. When you pre-order a book, it is a big deal because for any author, it's how all the retailers know that there's interest in the book and then they decide to stock it. So if you have someone out there that you adore and that you love or different authors that you follow, pre-order their book. It's the biggest gift you can give them, even if it's many months out. Um, and I know a lot of retailers have that pricing match thing. So like no matter what the cheapest price is later, you'll get that that price. So it doesn't hurt to order it far out and just really helps authors. Um, so also, okay, so while Worthy launches in February, um, as part of the VIP team, we're going to spend a few months before, like literally kicking off 2024 together, feeling fully, 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 fully worthy. The legendary Tony Robbins recently read an early copy of Worthy, and here's what he says about it. Powerful and transformative. If you want to believe you're enough, love yourself and transform your life. Jamie's got your book and she's got your back. Thank you, Tony. Tony Robbins. And then we have the amazing living legend, John Maxwell. Whew. Oh my goodness, y'all. He's in his 70s. He's living legend, uh, mentor, and dear friend, written over 60 books. Uh, and here's what he has to say. No one teaches us how to build self-worth better than Jamie Kern Lima. No one. Thank you so much, John. So, so kind and gracious. And you know, here's the thing: building self-worth is so important. Right? So important because here's what I know to be true: there's only one of you in the entire universe, and you are not crazy. You're just first. You are just first. I'm going to do a sneak peek read um, from a chapter of Worthy, How to Believe You Are Enough and Transform Your Life, Simple Steps, Life-Changing Results. Dedication for the 80% of women who don't believe they're good enough, the 75% of female executives who face imposter syndrome, and the 91% of women who don't love their bodies, this book is for you. The time for change has come. Let's do this together. No girl, no woman, no person left behind. Worthy starts here. You become what you believe you're worthy of. Do you remember the first time, perhaps as a little kid, sitting in the classroom that you knew the answer, but decided not to raise your hand. With a slight pit in your stomach caused by the newly daunting awareness of other people's opinions, you debated raising your hand and going for it until you decided not to. And just like that, in a single moment, you began to live in a way that was incongruent with your soul's fullest expression. You doubted, you held back, you hid, you played it safe, you questioned whether you were wrong, even though you knew you were right. You questioned if you were smart enough. You questioned if you were enough. And now, fast forwarding to today, are you still the person who's not raising your hand when you know the answer? Are you still hiding just in case you're wrong, just in case you fail, or, or because you want to stay in your comfort zone of certainty? 
Now you're an adult who knows the answer, but inside, are you still that same little kid who doubts it? Maybe you're sitting silently in work meetings or in your daydreams, knowing you have a wild idea that just might be genius. Or are you languishing in an unhealthy friendship or relationship, knowing you're worthy of more, but not quite believing it enough to leave? Or you're the boss, but you're holding back from taking chances because deep down inside, you're afraid you're not strong enough to be a leader. Did you finally get that big break, that big promotion, that big increase, but you feel like an imposter, so you're playing it small? Maybe you really despise that other PTA mom, but you betray yourself and spend your precious free time hanging out with her. Maybe you're hustling and burned out while hiding that what you really need is rest. Maybe you're struggling with a health issue and losing faith in your body, your worth, and your creator. Do you feel unseen at your core and tell yourself the lie that life is better that way? Maybe you're working in a business, but you know you're born to run one. Maybe you're in an intimate partnership where your worthiness goes unrecognized, but you're afraid to be alone, so you're dimming your light and hiding from your truth. Maybe you're calling busyness a badge of honor when you're really using it to numb your feelings. Maybe you've been living by someone else's story of success for you because you're confusing approval with love. I've done that most of my life. Maybe you've decided that other people have already done what you can do better than you could do it, so you've been canceling yourself out of your own calling. Or maybe you've been showing up as who the world tells you to be, people-pleasing for so long that you don't even remember who you are anymore. Self-doubt, unworthiness, and fear cause us to dim our soul's light and start playing it small, holding back, hiding, speaking only part of our truth, living only half of our life, expressing only part of our soul's true essence, craving the perception of belonging over authentic connection, craving validation and significance in a way that's defined externally, because we start to believe that these are the only paths to love, to belonging, and to worthiness. If any of these ring true for you, if you know at the deepest part of your being that you're only living as part of who you are, but you're holding back and doubting or hiding all of who you are, then you probably feel an inexplicable void in your life, an aching longing for something that's missing an emptiness creating when others or even yourself don't know and therefore can't embrace the full authentic you, a disconnection from joy when no matter what you achieve, it doesn't bring the feeling of fulfillment you hoped it would, an unremitting feeling that you're not quite enough, a lack of feeling truly alive that you can disguise from the world with the ease of a smile. You're living your life hiding in plain sight. Okay, so maybe you're thinking like, whoa, we're going deep right off the top of the book. Yep, we're going there because your time is precious. And in this one beautiful life we each have, it's precious. And I'm not showing up to play small, especially because I'm going to ask you to show up fully in the pages to come. I wrote this book with the purest intention to give you everything I've got as an expression of love from my soul to yours. And each of us is on a journey toward believing, then truly knowing in every ounce of our being that we are fully worthy, right? And here's the thing, y'all, exactly as we are, that's the key part. We're fully worthy exactly as we are. This is one of the most critical parts of achieving what Oprah Winfrey powerfully describes as the highest truest expression of ourselves. And it's a huge step on the personal evolution of believing, then knowing that you, exactly as you are, are enough, valuable, and fully worthy of love and belonging. And you are. There's nothing that you have done or could ever do that changes that. But let's go there later because chances are, if you're anything like I've been most of my entire life, you might not believe me just quite yet. Speaking of Oprah and speaking of hiding in plain sight, I want to share one of the greatest moments of my life, a moment that almost didn't happen 
and one that came after four years of me hiding because I didn't actually believe I was worthy of it. Oprah was my mentor from afar, the one I spent every weekday as a little girl and later as an adult watching on TV. The one I dreamt of meeting my entire life and had this wild knowing deep inside that somehow I actually would. Quote, this is what I know 100% for sure, Oprah said as she held up my first book, Believe It, to the camera. You don't become what you want. You become what you believe. (laughs) Y'all, I did everything in my power to keep my jaw from dropping open. She's holding to my book. She made jaw from dropping open, not to pee my pants and to believe that this moment was real and was actually happening. You see, it almost didn't happen. In fact, many of the most significant moments in my life almost never happened because for years while my soul dreamed wildly big, bold dreams and imagined moments like this one with Oprah, I never thought they could actually happen because I didn't believe I was worthy of them ever actually happening. In fact, maybe you can relate to this. I have spent most of my life feeling like I wasn't enough and doubting myself out in my own destiny. No matter how vividly we visualize our goals and dreams, perhaps in relationships or in our careers or in our health, no matter if we even take action toward making them happen, if deep down inside we actually don't feel like we're deserving or worthy of those dreams and goals, then we won't achieve them. We'll stay stuck and never go for them. We'll talk ourselves out of them. We'll give up too soon or somehow sabotage them along the way. With some, but not strong self-worth, we might actually allow ourselves to feel worthy enough to achieving a big goal and dream, but when we do, we'll arrive shortly after still feeling empty, unfulfilled, and like something is missing. Has this ever happened to you? If you've ever experienced a sense of not enoughness, even if you know it's a lie, because it is, and you want to overcome it for good, this book is for you. If you, if not enoughness, if not enoughness feels like, you know, your hidden twin, then we might just be long lost triplets. If you struggle with self-doubt and not feeling worthy, even if no one knows it but you, This book is for you. And I believe that one of the bravest and most important journeys that we are all on in this lifetime is learning the truth, which is that we are more than enough and knowing and believing it in in every part of our being. If this resonates with you, I've got your book and I've got your back. See, I believe the moment you learn to trust yourself The moment you learn to trust yourself and believe that you are worthy is the moment your entire life, the past and future generations of your family and our entire world changes for the better. It's only when you believe you are worthy of it, whether it's of having a healthy relationship, of receiving unconditional love, of celebrating your body, of sharing your ideas, of being in the room, of being on the stage, of leading the team, of having soul-filling friendships, or of living out your biggest hopes and wildest dreams, that your greatest life and destiny start to unfold. It is truly only when you learn to believe you are worthy of it. So y'all, here's the thing. As Oprah held up my book, I tried desperately to be present and stay in my body and to focus on the thousands of people watching us live as she and I taught the class together called The Life You Want. Please help me serve at the highest level I can. I prayed over and over because I've learned over the years that having an intention that's bigger than myself is the only way to get out of my own head. Before she even held up my book, I was already struggling to believe that I was actually teaching a class with the person I consider my mentor my entire life. It was the first time that she and I had ever done anything professional together. What Oprah and I knew which the live audience didn't know that day, is that nearly five years earlier, when I met her in person for the first time and we had lunch together shortly after, she gave me her personal phone number. And you wanna know what I did? I didn't call her for almost four years. 
Yep, Oprah, the one person I would have done anything to meet, the person I spent thousands of afternoons as a little girl watching from my living room all alone, the person who inspired much of my career, had given me her direct cell number, and I didn't call her for four years. Why? Well, I thought I knew why for a long time. See, as the months, then years passed, I told myself stories that made sense. Stories like, you're not ready to call her yet. Or, everybody probably wants something from her. Play it cool so she knows you don't. Or, you don't have the perfect thing to say yet. When you do, you'll know, and then it'll be time to call her. Or, if she gets to know you, this is a big one that I told myself so many times, if she gets to know you, she'll discover you're not as interesting, smart, funny, successful, cool, talented as she might think you are. Until one day, I realized the real reason I hadn't called Oprah, and I wasn't proud of it. I hadn't called her yet because deep down inside, I didn't believe I was worthy of it. I did not believe I was worthy of being her friend. Have you ever had moments like this in your life where you sabotaged an opportunity or didn't go for it at all because you didn't think you had what it takes? Maybe this is a reoccurrent theme for you in your life right now. And if it is, you're far from alone. I believe one of the most prevalent forms of cancel culture is one that no one talks about. It's us canceling ourselves before we even try. When I realized the real reason I hadn't called Oprah in four years, I felt a knowing. Feeling unworthy was not aligned with who I truly am, with the person I was created to be. See, my soul, all of our souls know, my soul knew I was worthy, but I let my thoughts and my mind's deep belief about my own unworthiness overpower my soul's knowing. Without realizing it, I was letting my feelings of unworthiness sabotage something I had dreamed of my entire life. When I had this realization almost four years after the day I got her number, I decided it was time to turn down the volume on my doubting mind and turn up the volume on the power of my soul and my soul's knowing. I decided to trust myself. The part that knows that I am worthy and you are too. And I dialed her number. I'll share more about this call later, but first fast forward to May, 2022, when I was teaching the class live alongside Oprah, I had been preparing tirelessly for months for this opportunity, but like all of our biggest moments in life, we've really been preparing our entire lives for them, right? Whether we know it or not, because as Oprah teaches, and I fully believe every step, this is important to hear y'all and take this in, every step, failure, victory, mishap, trauma, growth, blessing, lesson, and moment of grace has always been happening for us to prepare us so we can show up in each coming moment exactly as we're destined to. Even our setbacks are almost always set up for the path we're destined to take. As the live class began, I led the Oprah Daily audience through live exercises on how to build resilience, embrace rejection, stop hiding, and to learn to confidently step into all of who they are. Oprah and I shared stories and teachings I was in such a state of flow that it felt like I was moving inside a space that had been divinely orchestrated. Then as Oprah held up my book again, and I tried not to fall out of my chair again, she said something that sent shockwaves that felt like truth through my body. Words that I believe capture the ultimate path so many of us are on, and even if we haven't discovered it yet. Words that capture why I wrote that book and even more powerfully why I wrote this one. Words I believe that if we embrace can change the course of our entire lives. She said, you don't become what you want. You can have the greatest heart desire and work really so hard, so hard, so hard. But if you don't believe you are worthy, it will not come. That is the magic formula. In my life, I have learned to believe I'm worthy in stages through ups and downs, big moments of knowing and small steps toward believing. In our human experience, believing our worthiness is often a lifelong pursuit and one of the most important ones we'll ever take. See, if I hadn't pursued building my self-worth 
Many of the moments in my life stories so far would have never happened. The stories that the press loves to, to share about me usually say something like, Denny's waitress builds billion dollar business. And while that's true, my real story is a girl who didn't believe in herself and learned how to. A girl who felt unworthy and often still does to this day, but who is hell bent on learning to believe that she is. A girl who was placed into adoption at birth, but decided she was chosen and born not only on purpose, but with purpose. A girl who knows in her soul that at our core, we're all enough and we're all worthy of love. I'm a girl who knows that where we come from does not have to determine where we're going and that making bad decisions in our past doesn't mean that we're bad. A girl who knows that the labels that others put on us and the ones that we put on ourselves are removable, not permanent. A girl who faced thousands of rejections for years when she was building her business but chose to trust her gut and keep going anyways. A girl who had a knowing she'd one day meet Oprah and then learn that we become what we believe when we finally believe in ourselves. A girl who had learned to learn that she was worthy of being in the room, of launching a business, of being called CEO, of learning not to wait on her weight, of learning to love herself and learning to believe she's worthy of love. A girl who knows that we are not our past mistakes. We are our present and future intentions. Here's what I know to be true. And this is so important to take this in. If we don't believe we are worthy of starting the business, of being in a loving, committing relationship, of having healthy, empowering friendships, if we don't believe we're worthy of a seat at the table, of writing the book, of running for office, if we don't believe we're worthy of rest, of celebrating your body exactly as it is, of soul care, of doing less and being more, if we don't believe we're worthy of showing up on social media authentically, of leading the team, of breaking the generational cycle, if we don't believe we're worthy because we've made too many mistakes, we've already failed too many times, or because someone told us we weren't worthy and we believe them, if we don't believe we're worthy of all the things we want and deserve, we'll never get them. In life, you don't soar to the level of your hopes and dreams, you stay stuck at the level of your self-worth. You don't rise to what you believe is possible. You fall to what you believe you're worthy of. In your goals and career ambitions, you don't achieve everything that you, you know, are qualified for or capable of. You plateau at what you believe you deserve. And whether you know it or not, at the level of success where you've established your own internal identity. In your romantic relationships, the level and depth of intimacy, vulnerability, and love can only be as strong as the level and depth of vulnerable, intimate love you have for yourself. It's the same with your friendships. And in these relationships in life, okay, here's a big one, y'all. This is, whew, okay. In your relationships in life, the level of pain you allow another person to cause you, whether it's through hurtful words or actions, often hovers right around the standards you have for the level and frequency of hurtful thoughts, ways, and words you think and say to yourself. And it's the same with your body. Your body can feel like a source of shame or like a miracle in motion, all depending on your relationship with worthiness. When you change what you believe you're worthy of, you change your entire life. See, we can have big goals and dreams. We can study, get knowledge, get all the biggest degrees on the wall. We can become activists, use our voices. We can know with passion and clarity that what we believe in and what we believe for, we can make vision boards and we can even distinguish ourselves amongst the rare group of people who actually take action toward getting what we want in life. But if we don't believe deep down inside we're worthy of it, It'll never happen. Or if it does, we won't be able to sustain it because in life, we don't get what we want. We get and maintain what we believe we're worthy of. And when deep down inside, we don't believe we're worthy of what we want, hope, and dream for, we'll find a way to lose it 
or for it to not happen at all. We'll sabotage the opportunity. We'll put the decent guy in the friend zone. We'll ghost a new friend that has pure intentions. We'll make a million excuses why we're not ready to make a career move, don't have the resources or the time or the talent. We'll focus on our problems instead of our potential because problems can be an easy way to justify playing life small. We might think we have a net worth problem and what we really have is a self-worth problem. And when we deep down inside don't believe we're worthy of abundance, we sabotage ourselves to make sure that we don't get it. We dim our light to make others feel comfortable and fit in. We tell ourselves stories like, once I get to my goal weight, then I'll be enough. Once I get more experience, then I'll apply for the promotion. Once I get the kids through school, then I'll focus on building a healthy relationship. We'll sit in the audience watching, all while knowing we are born to be on the stage. We'll walk into the room and while, all while hiding in plain sight, and then we'll start living our lives this way. We'll talk ourselves out of our potential, out of our talent, out of our knowing, out of trusting ourselves, out of our gifts, out of the relationships we deserve, out of getting unstuck, out of making our health a priority, out of asking for the raise, out of launching the idea, out of accepting a mentor's offer, and if we're not careful, out of becoming the person that we're born to be. If one of these examples hits home for you or you feel like it's a past or present version of yourself, then this book is for you. If you struggle with not believing you're enough or worthy of walking into the big meeting, of being called good parent, of wearing the swimsuit, of receiving unconditional love, of looking in the mirror and seeing everything beautiful, of speaking up, of asking for help, of resting, of setting boundaries, of showing up in this world as you authentically are and as all of who you authentically are, if you struggle with that, this book is for you. I wrote this book for you if you have some self-doubt to destroy and a, and, some, and a destiny to fulfill. And I'm so honored to invite you into the pages of this journey together. And I'd like to start by imagining together. See, I can't help but imagine what our world would look like if it was filled with women who decided to believe they are worthy. When I imagine a world full of women who feel worthy, I imagine the earth shaking with the jolt of possibility when we wake up in the morning. Imagine with me, what would a world full of women who decided to believe they're worthy feel like? The potential that would be unleashed, the power of possibility unfolding. Imagine the generational cycles broken. Imagine the unhealthy relationships that would end. Imagine the businesses that would be launched. Imagine the body shapes and sizes that would be celebrated. Imagine the rest that would be taken without guilt. Imagine the cellulite that would be confidently jiggling with joy. Imagine the seats that would be filled up in the boardroom. Imagine what the list of Fortune 500 CEOs would look like. Imagine the mental and physical health that would be prioritized. Imagine how our government would lead. Imagine the injustices that would end. Imagine how children's storybooks would be written. Imagine who little girls would grow up dreaming of being. Imagine the time and capacity that would be freed up when self-doubt is silenced. Can I get an amen up in here? Amen. <laughs> imagine and imagining this is why I wrote this book with the intention of you not just imagining what your life would be like if you truly felt worthy, but actually learning how to believe you are because you are. And in your soul, you know that you are. Most of us are born into a world or even into loving, well-intentioned families that whether knowing, knowingly or not, teach us to believe that we're not. I believe if we choose to, it's possible to unlearn uh, all the lies we've been taught that don't feel right in our soul, take our power back, and decide today is the day to forge a new path ahead. If you feel me, say out loud wherever you are, I'm ready. I'm ready.
<laughs> All right, everyone in the room said, but don't think I didn't hear you at home not say it. So here's the deal. Listen, if you're not going to be bold here along with me, if you are going to hold back and not be bold now, how are you going to be bold out there, right? When things get hard. So I'm going to say it with you. We're going to say it loud together. Who cares what anyone around you right now thinks? Okay, ready? On the count of three, we're going to say I'm ready loudly and we're going to proclaim it together. One, two, three. I'm ready. <laughs> you don't become what you want. You become what you believe you're worthy of in life, in friendships, in your career, and in your hopes and dreams. And one of the greatest parts of your journey is learning to believe you're worthy and, and stop hiding, right? That's a big one for so many of us. Learning for the first time or the first time in a long time, the courage to start raising your hand or to be the person who leads and encourages others to raise their hand, to discover the true essence of your soul, the real you, and to start living as the real you, not as your achievements, but your innateness that is full and whole and enough and blossoming toward a new freedom and fulfillment that springs alive when we live in alignment with the true nature of the person we're born to be. When we absolutely know in every ounce of our being that the person who we truly are is enough. When you venture to stop hiding in, your, in plain sight, trust your inner knowing, live with congruence with your soul, ignite your purpose and show up in this world as all of who you are, that's when you truly feel fulfilled and alive. That's when you are living in alignment with your assignment. That is when you become the person you're born to be. That's when you're able to fully live and express the joy and the beauty and the gifts and the ideas and the possibilities of your soul. That's when you can wake up every morning and ask yourself one of life's most powerful questions. What will you do with the power that is you. And then with that power fully tapped into and because you're no longer hiding from it, you bravely, boldly live the answer. Throughout the pages of this book, I hope you'll laugh, connect, see, and be exactly you every step of the way. Right? We did not come here to play it small or to look cute. We're going to go deep, as deep as you are ready to go. You might feel like this book is too much at times, or perhaps it's going to feel like you arrived at the end way too quickly. We'll examine our own self-worth and delve into the lies, keeping us doubting ourselves, unlearn those lies, and embrace the truths that wake up worthiness. We'll begin our transformation into living authentically and fulfilling our destinies, there's some chapters packed with tactical tools you can apply to your life right now that have led to breakthroughs for me, like how to redefine rejection, how to rethink the labels you put on yourself, and how to take risks when you have a million reasons why you're afraid to. There's some chapters you might find deeply personal and stir up a lot of thought and emotion, and some might evoke the feeling of heavy reflection. Others might spark joyful, wide-eyed, soul-filling delight. I know how precious the gift of your time is, and I can promise you we're not taking a second of it for granted in this book. I am all in with you right by your side, and we are going to go there together, okay? Soul to soul, light to light, love to love. The one thing I'm going to ask of you is this. In every story, every lesson, every silly laugh out loud, embarrassing overshare, there are some of, there are a lot of those. Uh, every vulnerable, soul-stirring revelation and every deeply challenging question to trust yourself to know if it's right for you. And if it's not right for you or you're not right to consider it, then just skip that part. And you're going to know because your soul will know at each turn of the book, the parts that are for you at this moment in your journey. You'll know if the timing is, you know, not right to open yourself up in certain ways. It might feel too much. And you're going to know if the timing is just right. And the words feel like they were written exactly for you. You may want to have a journal or pen and paper handy while reading. And as we begin this journey together, I just want to ask that you trust yourself fully. Take the things that feel right for you and leave the rest, perhaps for another day or another person you share your book with. And I sure hope that when you are done with Worthy, that you share it with another person, give another person your book. I believe in divine timing and that our steps are divinely ordered in life. And I don't believe it's a coincidence or an accident that you're hearing these words right now. 
Similarly, in this book, I'm leading you on an intentional journey, one transform, transforming step at a time. Each chapter lays a key piece of the foundation that builds on the next, all crafting a deeply personal worthiness journey intended to expand how you uh, see and unconditionally love yourself from seeing the importance of and critical difference between self-confidence and self-worth to unlearning those lies that lead to self-doubt and embracing the truths that wake up worthiness to transforming your connection to yourself and multiplying your unconditional self-love to knowing and truly believing in your innate value and worthiness. As we begin this journey, I want to invite you to come with me through the pages and it's who you truly are, not as the role you play at work, not as who you have to be when you're the leader in the room, not as who other people want you to be, not as the version of you that the world rewards, not as the socially conditioned belief systems that you've built, but as the person who sheds all of it, all of it, who is willing to show up soul first. Coming soul first, right along with me, is safe here. Knowing this truth, there is nothing you can do or say that could ever make you unworthy of love. I believe we are all here to love, to receive it, to give it, to live it, to be it. And our greatest journey on this earth is to learn how and to truly believe we're worthy of it. My intention in the pages of this book is that you experience the true feeling of home that fills your soul. And there's no greater feeling of home than living in alignment and congruence with your soul, with the true nature of who you are and who you were born to be, fully worthy. And yet when we aren't living in the truest expression of our souls, it can feel like we're a stranger in our own lives, as if we're living our lives away from our real home. Our souls are our true home, and the words in this book are a love poem from my soul to yours. Let's live in our souls together on this journey. And as we get started, I want you to feel like I'm welcoming you right into my home. When I imagine opening my front door to see you, I will really see you. And you can really see me. And when you walk in, I'm wearing my favorite cozy sweats, no makeup, unwashed hair, and a messy bun, but I did use some dry shampoo because I knew you were coming. And I give you a great big hug while my dogs are jumping on you and kissing you as if they'd never gone through training school. I have your favorite warm drink in a coffee mug ready to greet you. The mug says worthy on it because you are. After I hand it to you, imagine seeing a sign right in front of you on the wall as you walk in. It's how I want you to feel when you walk into my home or into my hug. The sign says, come as you are. Heal where you need. Blossom what you choose. Journey toward your calling. Stay as long as you like. You belong here. You are worthy. You are loved you are love. I love you, Jamie. Are you ready to get started? Because I am ready if you are. And as you are about to turn the page, I'm imagining reaching my hand right out to yours. Here we go. That is the first chapter of Worthy. <laughs> I'm so, so, so excited and just honored and just so grateful to share that with you. I'm so honored to share this advanced chapter read of Worthy with you. And I just want to take a moment. I want to say thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much to so many of you who have you know, ordered your copy of Worthy for yourself or someone that you care about. And just a reminder, if you order Worthy today from wherever you buy books at and then you go to worthybook.com, you're going to get some incredible exclusive bonus gifts as a thank you for ordering. And amongst those amazing bonus gifts, you're going to get that 95-page Worthy Workbook action plan to help you implement all the tools from the book into your real life. And normally a workbook like that is sold separate, but you're going to get it, uh, the whole 95-page action plan is just a special thank you gift. Um, 
for ordering. So you just wanna go to worthybook.com and you're gonna get yours along with all the other bonuses. And I get this question so much, so I just wanna clarify this because I'm seeing it written on the board, um, that if someone else in your life uh, could benefit from building true self-worth too, their name's probably already popping into your head, that when you gift them a copy of Worthy that they're gonna also receive all the amazing bonus gifts. So you can, um, you know, grab an extra book for them anywhere books are sold, and then you just submit your friend or loved one's info at worthybook.com. Uh, of course, be sure, to, uh, be sure to send them a note and let them know that you've done that for them. Uh, and I just wanna say thank you so much for helping me spread the word about Worthy, that we are all on this journey of building self-worth together. And I'm just so honored to be on it with you. I feel that this is uh, not only a mission, but a movement of all of us learning to unlearn the lies that lead to self-doubt and embracing the truths that wake up worthiness. But I cannot do this on my own. <laughs> like, I need your help in this, uh, especially in this movement of building an unshakable self-worth. So let's leave no girl, no woman, no person left behind in believing, then knowing that they are truly worthy. So thank you. I see you, I am you, I believe in you, I love you, you are worthy. That's a wrap on Worthy Watch Party!